Yuri van Geest, ambassador of the Singularity and University and co-author of Exponential Organizations, and he's focusing on these, these differences between linear organizations, what he calls and exponential organizations. And I like to introduce Yuri van Geest. This is your stage now. So, first the video, if it works, uh, maybe you can help, yep. So we all know how this ended, and this is not to provoke or to shock you. This is about a fundamental insight in human nature. It's that we frame a new phenomena using an existing mental model. And think about all these technologies that are emerging in our world. That's a new phenomena, and we frame it with our existing mental model. And the same is also applicable to organizations. We are entering a new era. So keep this video in mind during my talk. So at Singularity University, you focus on emerging exponential technologies, the wave, the tsunami that's coming, the new phenomena. So it's founded by Ray Kurzweil on the left, Peter Diamandis and Larry Page, uh, almost eight years ago now. It's based at NASA R&D campus in Silicon Valley, Mountain View. And it's supported by NASA, Google, Cisco, Autodesk, Desk, Genentech. Uh, and they focus on how to create new startups that will impact a billion people and solve the global ground challenges. Water, food, energy, healthcare, education, climate change above all, social inequality, poverty, etc. And the good news is we have already around 10 uh, startups that will impact a billion people in the next 10 years. That's the key goal at Singularity University, like Made in Space. Uh, three months ago, the startup, the first startup that allows us to 3D print spare parts in space. The first time we've ever produced anything out in outer space. So we focus on biotechnology, nanotechnology, neurotechnology, artificial intelligence, robots, drones, 3D printing, 4D printing already, thermoplastic, sensors, solar energy, blockchain, how all these fields are doubling in capacity every 18 months, sometimes faster, sometimes slower, and are converging. That's a new world, that's a new wave. We've never seen this before. Some key examples. Next three years, your Apple Watch will diagnose cancer using hyperspectral sensors. You can check it out using ultraviolet and infrared light. It's being developed now in Shenzhen. 
scientific fact three months ago, Nature and Science magazine. We can do, you use our brain for self-healing. So placebo is not an exception. Placebo effect is the new normal. Self-healing will be the new standard to a certain degree. Scientific fact. Cancer has been solved. Wired magazine two, we two weeks ago. We've heard this before, of course, true. But this seems to be very profound. I've heard in China and in Silicon Valley. MicroRNA techniques. Exponential technologies, robots. You can see how the, the skin of a, of a grape is being repaired by a small robot in a glass. We can 3D print anything. Seven years ago, only five materials, plastics. Now 350, including glass. We move from 3 billion people online to 7 billion people online in the next 10 years. Supported by Facebook, Google, SpaceX, and Virgin. Soon we have, in the next years, we have thousands of nanosatellites in space offering internet access, but they, they can also do the following. They can detect individual molecules from outer space on Earth today. Think about the implications. Poaching, gone. Littering in the Pacific, plastics, you're being picked out. It's a good thing. You burn down forests in the Amazon region. So to sum it up, a lot of exponential technologies. Here you see a sort of overview. The speed of change is accelerating. The costs are dropping rapidly in the last seven years by 100-fold, sometimes even 10,000-fold. I have my own personal DNA profile at Singularity University was all six years ago, part of my DNA. It used to take 10 million US dollars eight years ago for one human DNA profile. Now it's less than a thousand. In the next five years, one human DNA profile will be less than a penny, is the expectation. If you look at sensors, the costs have dropped 90% in the last five years on average, McKinsey Research. The next five years, same application. Sensors will be dust. And if you look at solar energy, this is already outdated from our book, Exponential Organization, Solar energy used to be $16 cents per kilowatt hour a year ago. Now it's $4 cents per kilowatt hour. It's half the cost of fossil fuels. For the next 20 years, it will all be renewables, mostly solar. But now comes the funny part. Solar energy is already outdated itself. It's being disrupted by new technologies. We can create free electricity from the air using a nanocoating of titanium dioxide, dioxide and graphene. You can create free electricity, CO2 in the air, create free water, free electricity, less CO2 by a new technology. Being scaled up now in, in the UK and in China. So to sum it up, there's a lot of change. The half-life of the average business competency has dropped from 30 years, 30 years ago to five years today. If you study bioinformatics or neuroscience today, by the time you graduate, half of your knowledge will be outdated. And 90% of the Fortune 500 companies are gone in the last 60 years from this list. Next 10 years, 40% of S&P 500 companies will be gone. What's going on here? That's a key question. Think about the wave, the tsunami of technology. And there's a new organization emerging. We call it the Exponential Organization, also known as the Unicorn. We started about this project four years ago with Salim Ismail, Peter Diamandis, and Mike Malone. Here we see the time it takes to become a billion dollar company. It used to be 20 years, 20 years ago on average. Now it's less, it's already outdated. Now it's less than nine months. Think about Slack to become a billion dollar company. So why are these exponential organizations emerging? Why today? One, the, exponent, the environment becomes exponential. But we have organized in a linear fashion the last hundred years, the industrial model. Top down, centralized, hierarchical, closed, focus on efficiency, optimization, stability, and control. Makes sense. But the gap is increasing between the environment and the old model. So we have to create exponential organizations. Makes sense. Point two, we move from a scarcity model to an abundance model in the world. If you look at an apple tree, if you don't have a ladder, the technology, the apples are scarce. If you create technology, ladder, apples are abundant. The same is applicable for all these technologies. Biotechnology, nanotechnology, neurotechnology, AI are all ways to transform scarcity into abundance. So then the question becomes, as an organization, if you have scarcity, you have to own things, people and assets, for competitive advantage. 
But if you have abundance of information, communication, energy, all those things, healthcare, education, it's not about ownership for competitive advantage, it's about access. See here the sharing economy. The third reason for exponential organizations is this. We have learned to scale technology and systems in the last nine years. Uh, Amazon Web Services, cloud computing. We all know that. But systems are just one key building block of an organization. Those are structure, processes, KPIs, people, strategy. All these things are being reinvented completely by exponential organizations. So we are entering a systemic transformation of organizational models. That means who in this room is using a mobile phone of 15 years ago? Anyone? Nobody. So why are we using organizational models of 100 years ago to survive in today's exponential world? It doesn't make sense. So what are exponential organizations? The key question, of course, after the why. Exponential organizations, unicorns, are at least 10 times more efficient, effective, and or faster than linear peers in the same market space. And they use different exponential technologies like artificial intelligence, 3D and 4D printing, industrial robots, and sensors, but also new organizational techniques to scale up exponentially. And software is eating the world. Mark Anderson, one of the best VCs in the world, four years ago. Every company becomes a software company, as you probably all know here, especially in Germany with all the automotive companies. A car com company used to be hardware, now it's software. Tesla's computer on wheels. A food company used to be atom-based, now a food company globally is software-based. Think about Soylent. Increasingly. Alibaba, Hire, and Syngenta, in the next three years, you will, you will, all, everybody in this room will be able to, to create your own food at home in your kitchen using nano fridges. It's all software-driven food. You can create your own broccoli or tomato in a few days. Bye-bye groceries, bye-bye parts of the supermarket, big disruption coming along. Everything becomes software. As you can see also over here, in the last, on the left, the last 10 years, we've digitized marketing, sales, and services within an organization. Online marketing, mobile, and social, right? Today, we are digitizing manufacturing, production, Industrial robots, 3D printing, artificial intelligence sensors, we all know that. But the next 10 years, we are also digitizing the supply side, creativity and innovation itself. So we, will, we are fully digitizing every department in an organization, the exponential organization. Fully algorithmic, fully robotic. Think about the blockchain, two uh, talks before. So what are the characteristics of an exponential organization? It takes some time to explain. We have 11 attributes. On the left, you see stabilizing forces, like your left brain, as a metaphor. On the right, you see growth drivers, like this. Yeah. Um, so you need a balance of both. If you only focus on growth, exponential growth and scalability, it becomes anarchy. If you only focus on stabilizing forces on, on, on the left, the internal attributes, you become too inert, too slow. So the MTP is the glue of the organization, the massive transformative purpose. Think about the previous talks, the new generation, they want purpose, meaningful work. The purpose is how do you, do you improve the world as a company, besides making money? It becomes less important over time, in our view. So the exponential organization have a purpose, and it creates a power of pool effect. So the best employees, Customers and partners come to you because you have a higher goal. You have lower transaction costs, more retention, more viral impact, more social media, more loyalty. Those are the business benefits. Example, Singularity University, uh, creating startups to impact a billion people in the next 10 years. That's the purpose. That's an MTP. You attract people. Although also on the, uh, on the right, we see staff on demand, a flexible workforce, eh? on demand workforce. That's quite uh, self-explanatory. Freelancer.com, Odesk, Elance. E Community and crowd. How do you involve your fans to do marketing sales service for you, but also concepting R&D and prototyping and innovation itself? Think about all those platform organizations. Algorithms, that's very important. AI, 
machine, but also, most importantly, deep learning. How can you use AI or algorithms to personalize products and services? Comes more, makes it more scalable. Leverage assets. How can you use the assets of your customers as free supply with zero marginal cost for your business? Airbnb, a customer sometimes creates free supply for Airbnb. You can't compete as Hyatt Hotel or Hilton. You have to build a new hotel. Leverage the assets of your customers, a key requirement. Engagement is defined as um, incentive competition, gamification, and digital reputational systems. These allow you to cre increase quality and convert the crowdsourcing into community management. Makes you more scalable and more effective and fluid and flexible and agile. On the left, we see interfaces. Those are workflow and algorithms to integrate the right side. These are all abundance drivers, input ideas on the right, into your internal organization. It's a way to avoid mistakes, basically. Dashboards is about how to use real-time metrics with customers and employees to avoid mistakes and to boost motivation and learning. For example, Google uses OKRs, objectives and key results. Those are weekly goals defined by individual employees. Two simple goals, weekly, open and transparent for everybody to see in the, in the internal organization. Key driver for innovation and, and for stability. LinkedIn has said, the CEO, recently, the OKRs, objectives and key results approach has been the key reason for the success of LinkedIn in the last five years. Experimentation is defined as Lean Startup plus design thinking. Design thinking is for latent customer needs, and Lean Startup is for manifest customer needs. You need to do bo both. It's about, all about prototyping, iteration, continuous deployment, how to test your assumptions in terms of innovation with customers in real time, offline and online. The past we did sequential, linear development of innovation. Outdated, doesn't work in an exponential world of uncertainty. Autonomy is defined as self-driving self teams, self-organizing teams with radical decentralized authority for individual employees. And finally, social technologies, things like email are, are gone, they all use wikis, activity streams, file sharing, Dropbox, Astana, for example, Slack, Notable, those are the new platforms to be used. So we go from vertical communication and alignment to horizontal communication and alignment. Some key examples, strategy used to be extrapolation of the past. In the last, uh, so extra, you extrapolate for the, to the next five years, doesn't make sense in an exponential world. Now you have a purpose, that's the compass of your organization, not a map. Plus you iterate all the time, every day, every employee, everybody, and you have a one-year operational plan to stabilize. That's the new model. The old model is to eliminate risks, as you probably all know in Germany to a larger degree than, than other European countries, I guess. But the new model is to embrace failure. How to celebrate failure? For example, Tata and Procter & Gamble, they have failure awards. Every year, if you have innovated as an individual or a team, and you failed, but you have learned the most in a uni uni unique fashion, and you shared your knowledge internally, you get a prize, 10,000 US dollars, promotion, and validation on stage by the CEO. It works. How to change the culture? Failure awards. The old model is to do everything uh, internally. Yeah? Oh, but the, the key insight is also for Google, the best employees, by definition, work outside of your own company, not inside. So the new model is on the right. Less full-time employees for yourself, more staff on demand, community management, and crowdsourcing. The different intimacy circles. circles. Examples of exponential organizations and unicorns, we all, we all know this. Of course, Airbnb and Uber, but also Xiaomi, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, Slack. What about Blablacar in Europe, or Adyen, or Spotify maybe? Yeah? Or Supercell is a big one. You can check it out for yourself, it's a top 100 list on our website, exponentialorgs.com. So my, the, the key thing is, based on our research, every vertical market is being disrupted today. Not just uh, taxi, drive, hotel, it's happening everywhere. It's happening in finance, education, healthcare, energy, everywhere. Even construction, the very linear, classic vertical market. 
Some key practical examples. GitHub is the most exponential, in our view, exponential organization that ticks most of the boxes. When GitHub recruits new people, they don't care about your past, your resume, your LinkedIn profile. They focus on three things, passion, purpose, and potential. And potential by new recruits is measured by your level of curiosity, learning to learn and unlearn, creativity, and most importantly, resilience. Those are meta skills for the future. Potential is future oriented. The knowledge that you have is fleeable, is fleeing. It's all about your competencies and meta skills. So passion, purpose, and potential. So you come in, you tick the boxes, the first day at GitHub, what do you do? You can do whatever you want. You, you can create a new project yourself, you can join a current project. Permissionless innovation, without consent by a manager. And it scales up to thousands of people. Zappos, Amazon, Valve, Gaming, Valve Software, ING Direct, financial services, same thing. Flexible job roles, no job description, uh, autonomy, self-organizing, decentralized. Of course, you are very accountable, true, more so than ever, but the rest, up to you, humanizing the organization. Xiaomi, you know about Xiaomi? Okay, Chinese company, Shenzhen, exists only for five years. Market cap, worth, almost 50 billion. It's the fourth smartphone manufacturer in the world. And what they do, unlike Samsung or Apple or, Apple or Huawei, they use their fans or customers to create the new smartphones. So the only thing Xiaomi does is a little bit of R&D and, and producing it using Oppo, a sort of Foxconn in Shenzhen. The marketing sales and service and the, the new smartphone themselves, it, it, itself is done by the customers, the fans, the lo loyal ambassadors, tens of millions in, in, uh, today. That's interesting. So exponential organizations open up. They do less themselves, outsource to more to their crowd, community, stays agile. Another example, local motors. A lot of Audi people in the room, I think. Local motors can create a car a hundred to a thousand times cheaper than, let's say, Audi or BMW. To create a new car, it takes you three billion, on average, euros. Local motors, much less. And the funny thing is, local motors is, is done by you and me, the crowd, the fans, the members, 60,000 plus today. They do the, the marketing, sales, service, and the concept and prototyping, the all by. The only thing local motors does is producing the car. A platform organization, again, just producing it. In the future, the crowd will be, the community will be the factory itself, if you extend it, right? See here the blockchain. Anyway, another example. He knows about hire. Okay, Chinese company, a few people, five, six. Market leader in appliances, as you can see visually here. Nine years ago, after 20 years of growth, they decided we have become linear. We want to become exponential again. This is the most amazing story of corporate transformation we found out in the last five years. What they decided is to transform 80,000 employees into 2,000 individual startups in one corporate architecture. Imagine, less middle management, decentralization, autonomy, self-organizing. The CEO of each startup is de being uh, voted by, evaluated every three months by the employees. You can go or not, or you can stay, imagine. The community and the crowd, they, they co-create the, the products and, uh, and services with the employees, and the success from 20 to 60 billion in the last three years because of this huge transformation. Why don't we do this in Europe more? Why don't we learn from higher, from China? How can we become exponential again? We can. This is a great example. It takes time, true, it works. How to create an exponential organization as a corporate? That's the key question. Yesterday I talked about startups. It's also a key section in the book. But now I'll focus on corporates. Very briefly, because of time, four key steps. First, transform leadership. The more you have women and young people in your executive team and board, the better you, you will perform, based on scientific research. It's a fact. 25%, you can see it in the book. Um, but also, 
You have to change the leadership style from top-down directing to more enabling, facilitating, open, vulnerable, authentic, walking the talk, purposeful, listening to your employees. They, they are a new generation, reverse mentoring, right? The second step is to identify, invest, partner, and or acquire exponential startups in your business that will disrupt you on a product and service level or even organizational level. Create a portfolio, optimize it. The third step is disrupt X, even more difficult. The first step is easy, second one more difficult. Disrupt X is even more difficult. How to disrupt yourself? It's disrupt or be disrupted, as you probably all know. Disrupt yourself or die. You have to cannibalize, like Google was doing, Amazon, Apple, etc., in an effective way. So to disrupt yourself, you have to think about the following uh, issue. Classic corporate innovation doesn't work. Why? If you innovate in your core business, or cash cow, what happens? You activate the immune system, and it creates antibodies and kills the innovation, especially when it's a radical idea. Increment, in incremental innovation flourishes in the corporate, right? The larger you are, even more so. But the radical breakthrough ideas, that, that's necessary for these new exponential worlds, think about my case studies before I showed, is being ignored or sabotaged. So what we, what we see in all these exponential startups and corporates, they focus on the edges, create exponential startups on the edges, their own mandate, mandate and budget, reporting to the CEO, not the CFO, middle management, because they will don't, they don't understand it or don't, don't fully appreciate it because of politics, create different teams, five people, internal, external, old uh, and young, a mix of people using Lean Startup and Design Thinking, let them disrupt your core business over time and leave them alone, not for two years, but at least five to ten years. The, the, the most made mistake is they disrupt themselves, corporates, and after two years, the CEO says, because of shareholder pressure, we, we integrate the startup into the, the cash cow. Then what happens? It gets killed. Antibody. So leave it alone. Also, you can create a black ops team to fully disrupt your organization. Think if you are a bank today, uh, probably as you've seen by JP Morgan recently, or, or BNP Paribas, the CEO, the blockchain will disrupt the bank fully, the whole organization. So how to create teams that will create a black, or a black ops solution for your current organization? That's more fundamental than product innovation. Finally, you can do EXL Lite, so you can infuse those 11 characteristics of exponential organizations into your cash cow or core organization. That's the hardest part. It's feasible, we recommend it to different clients across the world, but it doesn't make really an impact long term because you have to disrupt yourself without legacy and history or sunk cost on the edges, small teams. That's the, that's the most effective way. Finally, some key rewards have been given to us, so we are very honored about this. Uh, now in 15 languages, one of the most uh, rated books on Amazon globally ever. And we have been nominated for the Oscar of, of Management Books recently, so we're very honored for this, together with Blue Ocean Strategy and What's Mine is Yours by uh, Rachel Botsman, the foundation of Sharing Economy. So we are excited to, uh, for this, and thank you very much for your information. Hope you had a great time, and enjoy the show. Thank you, Yuri. Okay, stay with me. Disrupt or die. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. who of you, after this talk, thinks his organization, business model, industry is going to die? Okay, there's one. What are you doing? Are you selling horse carriages? No, I'm working in tourism industry. In tourism industry. Okay. okay. But maybe there is some way to disrupt this. Sure. sure. So if you look at tourism, uh, what, what would be a game-changing uh, technology is AR, especially VR. Uh, Oculus Rift, HoloLens, uh, High Fidelity is emerging. It's a new Second Life will be launched this year. Okay, not traveling there, but yeah, just... Because, because the, the, the key insight is virtual reality will be the, the key disruptor of real reality. Mm -hmm. Unlike, let's say, Second Life, because right now VR is so immersive, so 3D, it's, it's, it becomes hyper-real, so you, 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 you won't see the difference any longer. So but, it's a key disruptor. But what I ask myself, how do you feel talking to people in the audience or doing other talks and telling them, okay, you're all going to die, you're doomed? No, no, it's optimistic because if I... Yeah, yeah true, because if I don't tell well, it... 
then I don't, then I don't respect it's you. Just the question how you uh, look at it. <laughs> I, it is my personal point of view. Uh, I really believe this because I'm into the singularity movement now for, for 10 years almost, and it's really pacing up every year, every day. So this is happening. This, this, this is small today, but in the next five years, all the technology I showed are becoming more mainstream. It so you see a change. Yeah, it's a, think about the video, yeah. Okay, your work is not for nothing, just for telling people you are doomed. I, I would like to help you, so hopefully <laughs> you will uh, embrace it a little bit. Okay, thank you so much, Yuri, Very for welcome. being here. Yeah.